In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who are pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity, and so in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Hannah conceived and gave birth to a son and called him Samuel, since, she said, I asked the Lord for him. When a year had gone by, the husband Elkanah went up again with all his family to offer the annual sacrifice to the Lord and to fulfill his vow. Hannah, however, did not go up, having said to her husband, Not before the child is weaned. Then I will bring him and present him before the Lord, and he shall stay there forever. When she had weaned him, she took him up with her together with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour, and a skin of wine and she brought him to the temple of the Lord at Shiloh. And the child was with them. They slaughtered the bull, and the child's mother came to Eli. She said, If you please, my lord, as you live, my lord, 
I am the woman who stood here beside you, praying to the Lord. This is the child I prayed for, and the Lord granted me what I asked him. Now I make him over to the Lord for the whole of his life. He is made over to the Lord. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are they, blessed are they, who dwell in your house, O Lord. Blessed are they, blessed are they, who dwell in your A reading from the first letter of St. John. Think of the love that the Father has lavished on us by letting us be called God's children, and that is what we are. Because the world refused to acknowledge him, therefore it does not acknowledge us. My dear people, we are already the children of God, but what we are to be in the future has not yet been revealed. All we know is that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he really is. My dear people, if we cannot be condemned by our own conscience, we need not be afraid in God's presence. And whatever we ask him, we shall receive, because we keep his commandments and live the kind of life that he wants. His commandments are these, that we believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and that we love one another as he told us to. Whoever keeps his commandments lives in God, and God lives in him. We know that he lives in us by the Spirit that he has given us. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.
the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Every year, the parents of Jesus used to go to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. When he was twelve years old, they went up for the feast as usual. When they were on their way home after the feast, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem without his parents knowing it. They assumed he was with the caravan, and it was only after a day's journey that they went to look for him among their relations and acquaintances. When they failed to find him, they went back to Jerusalem looking for him everywhere. Three days later, they found him in the temple, sitting among the doctors, listening to them and asking them questions. And all those who heard him were astounded at his intelligence and his replies. They were overcome when they saw him, and his mother said to him, My child, why have you done this to us? See how worried your father and I have been looking for you. Why were you looking for me? He replied, Did you not know that I must be busy with my father's affairs? But they did not understand what he meant. He then went down with them and came to Nazareth and lived under their authority. His mother stored up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom, in stature, and in favour with God and men. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. On this feast of the Holy Family, Scripture invites us to ask ourselves, what makes a family holy? Or better still, is it even possible to have a holy family? I suppose to answer this question is to first understand that holiness is not defined by how much the family prays or serves in church or in society. If anything, these are merely the results of holiness. And from today's Gospel, when Jesus went missing for three days, holiness also doesn't mean a problem-free family life. Rather, according to Pope Francis' apostolic exhortation, Amoris Laetitia, he says that holiness in a family, or he calls the spirituality of family love, is made up of thousands of small but real gestures. From this line, it seems to say that what makes a family holy is less about the doing, but more about the being, being Christ to one another, being love to one another. This may explain why all of today's reading speaks about this need to be more than to do. For a start, we see that to be a holy family is to be a people of faith. You may think that faith here only means faith in God. Well, that's a given. What many often don't realize is that equally important with this is to have faith in one another. Do I trust in my family members? Do I acknowledge the inherent good in the other? Because how I relate to my family members will affect the way I see and therefore relate to God. And so while we try to have God as the foundation of the family, let us not neglect to grow in faith in one another too. So that as we do so, it leads to growth in love for one another as St. John reminds us to do in today's second reading. And we do this by making time to spend with the family, however busy we may be with work and responsibilities. Secondly, to be a holy family is to be a people of mission. Everyone, from the youngest to the eldest, has a mission to play, and that mission is to reflect God. For example, as a child, the mission to reflect God is through how the child loves and honours their elders and through the living out of the vocation of a student well. Through today's Gospel, we are told this was what Jesus did. He lived under Mary and Joseph's authority. As a parent, the mission to reflect God is more than just providing materially or spiritually, such as helping the family to know, love and serve God, but it is also to provide ethically. 
imparting important life lessons such as justice, integrity, and the value of patience and hard work. Because God are these values, in fact. God is integrity. God is justice. God is patience. Hannah, in the first reading, by surrendering her only child to God, reveals that she is one who is true to her words. Despite desperately wanting a child, she freely offered him to God as promised, the moment he was weaned. How many of us today would actually do what she did, to be free to let go? How many today help the child to sincerely discern God's will, what God wants, and not dictate what we want for our child's life? And this is especially hard today, where we live in a world which says as long as no one knows, it's okay. So it's okay that our words do not necessarily match our actions. But we forget, sisters and brothers, that children learn more from what they see than from what they are told. A good time to ask ourselves, have I been teaching the young well by being true to my words? From today's Gospel, this was what Jesus' parents did. They taught Jesus well when it says that Jesus increased in wisdom, in stature, and in favour with God and men. And finally, as a couple, the mission to reflect God is through helping each other grow in the knowledge and love of God and through being faithful to their wedding vows. To be a holy family, finally, is to be a people who listen. And this is so important, especially today, because of our busyness, family members lack the time or the patience to listen to one another. We only listen superficially, sometimes even behind tainted lenses. And therefore, we don't really truly take time to listen to the other's unspoken words, such as one's body language, one's tone of voice, and one's heart. And so as a result, on one end, we jump to conclusions ever so quickly. Or, as the recipient, we close the doors of our hearts, believing that no one really cares, or no one really has the time to listen or truly understand. Jesus himself in today's Gospel listened when it says he was sitting among the doctors listening to them. What more us who are not God, even more we need to listen, that we may understand, that we may accept, and that we may eventually love. Let us therefore, sisters and brothers, strive to be a holy family. Through the small, but many gestures of love. By being a people of faith, by being a people of mission, and by being a people who listen. So that as we be a holy family, we may have the grace and the strength not only to face and walk through the usual issues of family life, but also help other families who may be struggling as the family becomes a witness of God's love. And so in response to God's word, let us together renew our faith with the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As children of God, we bring our intercessions to the Lord with confidence, knowing we will receive what we need. Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Let all members of the Church live out in peace and harmony their call to be the family of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That countries of the world safeguard and protect the earth, our common home. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That families in crisis find the help and support they need to flourish and thrive. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all gathered here strive to be faithful, loving members of the families we built. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, let all who seek the face of Christ find Him, here in this house of prayer, and also in all households, large and small, where your love is revealed. Through Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Bless be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Bless be God forever. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and Saint Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through Him, the holy exchange that restores our life has shone forth today in splendor when our frailty is assumed by your word. Not only does human mortality receive unending honour, but by this wondrous union, we too are made eternal. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. 
For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saints Francis and Claire of Assisi, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and William our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed sisters and brothers, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. And the Saviour's command and form my divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. 
that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe you are really here in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you more than anything in the world, and I hunger to receive you. But since I cannot receive communion at this time, feed my soul at least spiritually. I unite myself to you now, as I do when I actually receive you in Holy Communion. Amen. Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Wishing you all a blessed Christmas and may we continue to strive to be a holy family after the example of Mary, Joseph and Jesus by being a people of faith, a people of mission and a people who listen. <laughs>
comfort and joy. Do 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 do